Okay, let's do a quick review of module two. We now move into data and describing data and how we display data uh, visually, graphically, and also kind of start to analyze some of the values that uh, we see within those um, visualizations that are created, dot plots, histograms, box plots, or just to name a few of the representations, including bar graphs, Right. And so we started with module one, just the idea of what is statistics, how we collect data, why we do statistics, what type of studies. And then we move into what do we do after we have data. And so let's take a look at the completed guided note sheets that you have access to and my lecture videos that are aligned with this. So if you need more, of course, you, uh, uh, explanation, you go ahead and look at the lecture videos that I've posted with these note sheets. But we start with the idea of describing distributions, describing quantitative data is what we're looking at here versus bar graphs are categorical. We're describing and the way we describe it is through the shape, the center, the spread. And we also look, if you wanna think of little O, we call that socks, but the O can stand for outlier too. We look for anything outside that's unusual. We'll talk more about that, but this first one shows you what a histogram looks like, an example of a histogram, and it's for quantitative data. And the picture that emerges is our distribution, right? The shape, the center, and the spread. What does it look like? Where's the middle? And how spread out is the data? And so we can now see the distribution, and that's what we're looking at in this. Now, there are some, again, technicalities about how we create those. And We'll end up using StatCrunch to do that. And in the um, online homework, there's an example that shows you how to create a histogram for that. And so you can see, uh, again, but there are technicalities about what values go with each of the bars, right? The frequencies. And so that's kind of some of, and there's different ways to write that, which are explained. And so you start to see a picture emerging and it could be this, a different picture for the same data. And that's what that first example is, but it's still telling the same story. And then again, looking at these histograms, you should now be able to answer questions with regard to those histograms. And so in this section here, I think it's important to acknowledge the different shapes that emerge. And I think it's important to acknowledge that each of these shapes is telling a different story with respect to the data. Here, is, these are just pictures. Um, there's no variables, but depending upon the variable, each would tell a different story. And that's why the shapes are important as we look at that. And other things, unusual features, the outliers or gaps emerge within here. And that, again, is telling some story as we go through that. And then in these examples here, you're looking at different real life situations and graphs that would could potentially emerge with that type of variable, right? The number of miles run, number of hours spent. Remember, these are quantitative variables. And so it's good to kind of go through my lecture videos. You look at that. An example four would be, again, explaining how we kind of find shape, center, spread, or at least start talking about them. The next module, we actually calculate those values. We move on to other types of representation. There's a nice list here. So I would make a note of this here, the categorical variables and quantitative variables, the different graphs that emerge in, in statistical work with those types of variables. Very important to make those distinctions between them. And then again, you see the dot plots here. Dot plots are good because you can see the actual values, how many are there versus a, a a bar, right, can actually count. That's like the way we call discrete values. You can count them. And then again, if you want to go through the lecture video, you can see me explaining kind of these answers here. I'm also going to link uh, a course to you, these completed note sheets for you, so you could have that also. Um, we end module two with percentiles, quartiles, box, box plots. And I think the key thing is not necessarily doing this by hand. It's conceptual to understand it, even though we do some of these by hands, but understanding what a percentile is probably the most important aspect, aspect of that. What is a percentile? It's a value, right? You can see it's a value where we then know that a certain percentage of all the data is below that value. So 93, 
95% of all the data is below 93. And so that's the idea. Percentiles are used in our world as a form of what we call measurement. It's a measure of location, a way we compare things. Um, again, it's used for entrance into uh, selective universities or graduate programs. Um, it's used to in the health field to measure if someone is maybe um, displaying abnormal outlier values in certain measurements and vitals. Um, and so it, it's an interesting way of, 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 of analyzing data. And you would, again, you can go through the lecture videos there. I think important out of all of this, of course, are the five number summary, these key numbers that summarize data. So imagine you have thousands of data points and then we find only five numbers that describe thousands of data points or hundreds, whatever it is. And the five number summary does that. It breaks the data down into five numbers. It summarizes it. Like you have a book report, right? You summarize it, a book a review or a book summary, a thousand pages summarized in one page, right? That's what a five number summary does for us. And that five number summary is what you, is used to create a box plot. Uh, keep in mind, remember there are in my lectures, I show examples of stat crunch. And so here's an example. If you download the documents, that should be a link there, should be able to link to that. Um, but you find that within the, the course as you go through that. Um, and then here's a box plot. The box plot, again, really is important in that it tells us where the data is located, how much of it, 50%. And we're really interested many times in the, the middle 50%, the box. It's kind of where most of the data is. And then you have the min and max value. So you can kind of see the spread, how spread out things are. That then ends on this unit, ends on, of course, interpreting box plots, but specifically pay attention. There's always a, a question on an exam on calculating outliers using this process, even though a technology can do that for us also, calculating outliers. This is just to help us conceptually understand this idea that we're observing data that's outside the usual values. It's outside some um, acceptable values, which we call the fences, and it's an outlier. It's far away from the other numbers. Okay, so if you need more, go ahead and use my lecture videos, but there's my quick summary for module two.